everyone, I hope you're doing well, and of course Arnie does too. Now in the world's rivers and oceans, there are plenty of fish that are famous for being venomous, such as your stingrays, your lionfish, and your stonefishes. But as all these fish are quite famous for being venomous, a lot of people already know about the dangers of being stung by these species. But there are plenty of other fish that are venomous and don't get as much attention. So in today's video, I'll be going through five surprisingly venomous fish. And we'll start off today's video in the Indian and Western Pacific Oceans, as we have the striped eel catfish. Now when most people think of catfish, they think of large solitary freshwater species. And these fish are normally quite ugly and highly predatory. But the striped eel catfish is rather different, as not only is it a marine species, but they also have some striking coloration and are quite happy in groups. As juvenile striped eel catfish roam around in a dense ball-shaped school of around 100 fish. And in these large groups, they cruise around the coral reefs and seagrass beds, feeding on crustaceans, mollusks, worms, and algae. But as this species matures, they can be found in smaller groups. And once this catfish is fully mature, they can often be found on their own. And when they reach this stage, they are around 30 centimeters or 12 inches long. And this larger size means that they can take on larger prey. As not only do they feed on all the things that the juveniles do, but they also search the substrate, looking for smaller fish hidden in the sand. But if you were an open ocean predator and you saw a large ball of small catfish, it may look like an easy meal. But as I'm sure this puffer fish will tell you, that's far from the truth as the striped eel tail catfish has spines on its dorsal fin and its pectoral fins. And when under threat, it can lock these spines in place and anything that bites them will get a nasty surprise. And although it's extremely rare, this sting can even be fatal to humans. But despite this possible danger, you can also find this fish in the aquarium trade. But this is quite a complicated fish to keep in an aquarium because as I've covered, they like to be kept in large groups and will eventually reach around 12 inches long. And along the way, they may eat other tank mates and even each other. And this is actually a species that could appear in my invasive fish series, as they have become an alien species around Europe, particularly in the waters around Cyprus. And as the native species won't be aware of the danger of attacking this fish, it could have disastrous consequences for the ecosystem. And because of this, the striped eel tail catfish cannot be imported, bred, transported, commercialized, or intentionally released into the environment in the whole of the European Union. And although many people don't think of catfish as venomous, there are thought to be over 1,200 species of catfish that are venomous. And although this venom is an extremely dangerous in most cases, the stings can still cause a lot of pain. And even some popular aquarium species are venomous to some degree. But when it comes to catfish venom, the striped eel tail catfish's venom must be some of the worst. Before our next species, we'll be heading over to the Atlantic Ocean, as we have the common squirrel fish. Now the name squirrel fish is a common name for a large family of fish. And they got their common name because of their large squirrel-like eyes. And these large eyes give this fish great night vision, as these fish spend most of their daylight hours hiding in crevices or under ledges on coral reefs. But once the sun goes down, they can be seen swimming over sandy bottoms and seagrass beds, searching for their prey. And in most cases, this is crab larvae, shrimp larvae, small crustaceans, and occasionally juvenile fish. But as this isn't the largest fish, as they can reach maximum size of around 61 centimeters or 24 inches, it does have to look out for predators. And some of these predators are the dolphin fish, the mutton snapper, and the yellowfin tuna. And when the common squirrel fish is faced with such a predator, they first try and make themselves look as big as they can, by flexing the dorsal and anal rays. But if this doesn't work, they can inject venom from the spine under their gill cover, which can cause excruciating pain, and in some cases will convince the predator to leave it alone. So although it looks very harmless, it is capable of giving a rather nasty sting. But for our next species, we'll be heading over to the Western Pacific, as we have the striped blenny. Now this species has to be one of my favorite venomous fish on this list, as it's quite an innocent looking pretty fish. And although it can be found in shallow salt water, like many other blennies, it also spends a lot of its time in the open ocean. But as this species only reaches a maximum size of around 11 centimeters or 4.3 inches, it's quite small to be an open ocean fish. And there are plenty of other predators that would be more than happy to take them out. And because of this, they've come up with a very unique way to fight back. Because unlike almost all other venomous fish, they don't use their spines or barbs to inject venom as they use their teeth. As this species has relatively large thangs that protrude from the lower jaw, which are capable of injecting some surprisingly strong venom. And if its venom delivery system wasn't unique enough, the venom itself itself is also very strange, because the purpose of the venom is not to induce pain, but is designed to disorientate or otherwise impair predators, as the venom targets the body's opioid receptors. And this venom reduces the blood pressure of the predator, which could lead to the predator relaxing its jaws, allowing the blenny to escape. And as this venom targets the opioid receptors, it's being investigated as a new potential painkiller for human use. And when the venom was administered to mice, it didn't seem to cause any pain, which is quite strange as most fish venoms are very painful. 
And as this venom has been described as heroin-like, if you were bitten by the stripes blenny, it might make you feel dizzy and it could even mellow you out. But as this blenny is so small, it would be very hard to get a good amount of venom from a bite. So this fish is the perfect example of why you shouldn't judge a book by its cover. Before our next species, we'll be heading over to the brackish waters of the Indo-Pacific as we have the spotted scat. Now keeping brackish fish is a rather niche part of the aquarium hobby, but some of the most popular brackish species are the scats. And the spotted scat is one of the larger species, reaching a maximum size of around 35 centimeters or 13.8 inches. And in the wild, they can be found in coastal muddy areas such as estuaries, mangroves, harbors, and the lower courses of rivers. And in these environments, they're known to feed on worms, crustaceans, insects, and plant matter. But as well as being a popular aquarium fish, this species is also a popular food fish in many areas. But as I'm sure many fishermen will tell you, you have to handle this fish with care, as its dorsal and ventral spines contain venom that can cause great pain, dizziness, and even partial paralysis. But if you were stung by a spotted scat, the best way to treat the wound is by soaking it in hot water, which should dull the effects of the sting. But in some ways, I don't blame the spotted scat for stinging humans, as not only do we catch them and eat them, but we've given them a quite horrible name, because their scientific name translated from Greek means spotted feces eater. So if you have one of these guys in an aquarium, you should be careful when handling them. But for our next species, we'll be heading to marine waters worldwide, as we have the stargazers. Now the stargazers are some of the weirdest fish that are featured on the channel, and there are around 51 species in this weird and wonderful family. And one of the first things that you may notice about the stargazers is that most of their face is on the top of their head, and this is perfectly suited for their lifestyle, as they are most often found buried in the substrate, with their eyes looking up for prey, or as their name suggests, looking up at the stars. And most of the species in this family are quite small, with one of the largest species, the giant stargazer, reaching a maximum size of around 90 centimeters, or around 35 inches, although most species are a lot smaller than this. So because of this smaller size, they have a few interesting ways of defending themselves from other predators, such as rays and sharks. As some species of stargazers can defend themselves using electric shocks, as these species have a single electric organ consisting of modified eye muscles, which are capable of shocking nearby predators. But these electric stargazers are unique among all other electric fish, as they're the only electric fish that do not possess specialized electroreceptors. But as well as having this shocking ability, they also have two large venomous spines above their pectoral fins. And if you manage to tread on a stargazer, it can be very painful, but in most cases this is not life-threatening. But there has been a few reports of people being stung by the Atlantic stargazer, which has resulted in a handful of deaths. So although it doesn't have the deadliest venom, it's one of the most nightmare-inducing fish out there. But that's about it for this video. If you know of any other surprisingly venomous fish, then leave them down in the comments below, and I might make a part two. And also, if you've been stung by any of the species on this list, also let me know down in the comments below, as I'll be quite interested to find out how bad their stings really are. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.